The SMU compromise has been completed. Yesterday, Monday in Dallas, Texas, SMU and ACC, they were trying to get a full autonomy for playoff distribution slice of the pie, but they're going to settle on a partial. More than what the G5 schools get, but less than the autonomy four schools get. That's what SMU and ACC got out of Dallas, Texas on Monday. That's been finished. But Kirk Schultz, the president of Washington State, he is the last remaining holdout for the playoff manager committee to be finally able to change it from the six plus six playoff model to five plus seven playoff model. What is Kirk Schultz holding out for? Welcome to episode 367 of College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, please subscribe to our ever-growing channel. Smash the like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and friends. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right to it. <clears throat> Heather Dinich, ESPN. Last evening, CFP agrees on the SMU revenue distribution. Less than full Power 5 allotment, but more than the G5. The College Football Playoff Management Committee unanimously agreed upon an undisclosed amount of money for the incoming ACC member SMU that will go to the conference, but it's still less than the revenue the CFP typically distributes distributes to Power 5 schools, CFP Executive Director Bill Hancock said Monday. The 11 presidents and chancellors who control the playoff must still unanimously approve SMU's revenue distribution for the next two years, which are the final two seasons of the current 12-year contract. SMU will eventually receive the full share when the new contract is done for 2026 and for the next six years. I think everybody in the room felt like it was a fair accommodation, Hancock said. They spent a long time talking about it, over three meetings. The decision is significant because in the past, schools that made the leap from a group of five conference to a power five league also saw an increase in CFP revenue from roughly one million to six million. And of course, those numbers are going to grow in 2026. In 2022, the CFP voted to give full Power 5 revenue to incoming Big 12 schools, UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, and BYU. SMU and ACC were under the impression they would get the same. Hancock declined to say specifically what the monetary agreement was, and ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips declined to comment after the meeting. SMU Athletic Director Rick Hart did not immediately return a request for comment. The 10 FBS commissioners and Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick, who joined Monday's CFP meeting in Dallas by Zoom, have been discussing SMU's revenue situation for months. SMU had already agreed to forego ACC television revenue for its first nine years in the league. There's already a glaring CFP revenue gap between the Power 5, Pac-12, ACC, SEC, Big 12, and Big 10, and the Group of Five, Conference USA, Mid-American, Mountain West, Sunbelt, and the American Athletic Conference. Currently, about 80% of the CFP revenue goes to the Power 5, while 20% is allocated to the Group of Five. Now, the commissioners have to, de to determine how it will be shared amongst the Power Four as the Pac-12 is on verge of extinction following defections to other leagues. And finally, in this article, with the Pac-12 down to Washington State and Oregon State, the CFP's model for how teams qualify for the new 12-team playoff this fall remains on hold. Except for the Pac-12, there's unanimous support for the 5 plus 7 model that rewards the five, 5 highest ranked conference champions plus the next 7 highest ranked teams. Hancock said that decision is, is with the board where Washington State's President Kirk Schultz, 
Schultz represents the league with a vote on an issue that needs unanimity for approval. It needs everybody to vote on it. Yes, it's not done yet because the Pac-12 isn't prepared to vote on it. Hancock said Schultz has declined comment. It's not done yet. The change from 6 plus 6 to 5 plus 7 is not done yet because, well, quite frankly, Kirk Schultz is holding out. The Pac-12 is holding out. What is Kirk Schultz holding out for? You know he's got a lot of pressure. He's got a lot of pressure put on him in Dallas, Texas to be the last remaining holdout vote to change the model. The G5 conferences, you would think they would want the 6 plus 6 model for the next two years, but they want access. They want playoff access for 2026 and beyond. They want to be a part of this playoff expansion model for the next eight years, not just for the next two years. So they've acquiesced. They've said, sure, let's change it. Let's go from 6 plus 6 the five plus seven. They desperately want this to happen. And of course, the the, uh, the the power four conferences definitely want this change from six plus six to five plus seven. So what is Kirk Schultz holding out for? It was reported yesterday that Kirk Schultz, Washington State's president, wants Washington State and Oregon State's voting rights to be protected in the years beyond. They do not want to lose their voting power with the allotted four, with the power four conferences in the years ahead. They also want their distribution rights protected. They want to be, be being paid as the same as the other power four schools in the years ahead. They want both. They're holding out for both of those. And then Kirk Schultz will say yes to changing the model from six plus six to five plus seven. Put down your thoughts in the comments section below the video. Do you think Kirk Schultz is going to win out on this? Or is he going to bend his knee and say, okay, let's change the model? I think Kirk Schultz is going to get something out of this. The model has to change. Maybe, maybe, just like the SMU compromise where they, they, they don't quite receive the full share like the Power 5 schools do, the Power 4 schools are going to get in the year in the, for 2024 and 2025, but they're going to get more than the G5. Maybe there's going to be a compromise with Washington State and Oregon State. Maybe their voting power is going to be a little bit more than the G5 schools, but not like the Power 4 schools. And maybe the playoff distribution going beyond 2024 and 25. Maybe Oregon State and Washington State will get just a little bit more than the other G5 schools but not like what the Power Four schools are getting. Maybe the great compromise in Oregon State and Washington State will get Kirk Schultz to fold and say, okay, compromise, good. Let's change the model to five plus seven. Let's get something done in Dallas, Texas. What do y'all think? Will a compromise, can that get it done? Can that move Kirk Schultz's vote? Or on the model, on the on the five plus seven model, or do you think that Sankey and Petiti will continue to play hardball and your Mark and Phillips will join them on the question of Kirk Schultz trying to protect all the voting rights and distribution rights of Washington State and Oregon State? What do you think? I think there's gonna be a compromise. I think Oregon State and Washington State, it's a unique situation for both of those universities not power four schools going forward but maybe treated just a little bit more differently than the g5 schools in the years ahead we're going to be keeping an eye on this story and other stories in dallas texas and everything else that's going on in the college football world holy smokes there's a lot of things going on so stay with us here at peek around the corner until next time from all of us at patc to all of you, please, please, you all take great care of each other. Thank you so very much.